Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll dive into the Tetra Vortex build for Warlocks. Tetra Vortex is a burst damage skill which deals magic damage of 4 different elements to a target. Because of its massive damage, Tetra Vortex has the potential to one-hit kill high HP monsters such as minis and MVPs. In this guide, we'll discuss how to distribute stat points, which Warlock skills and runes to prioritize, what equipment and card set to use, and all the useful tips to boost your Warlock's Tetra Vortex damage. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll get a clearer idea on how to one-shot and use Tetra Vortex effectively. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First, let's take a look at the stat distribution. The most important stat to max first is Intelligence since it increases magic attack which is necessary for a higher damage output. Then a lot of the remaining points on Dexterity to decrease the variable cast time. Next, let's talk about the skill point allocation. In general, the skills from Mage to High Wizard class are the same as those I've mentioned in my previous High Wizard video. If you haven't watched that yet, I have the video linked down below. However, just to highlight, make sure you have the following skills. Level 10 Energy Code for Damage Reduction, Magic Damage and Ignore MDEF, and Level 20 Amplify Magic Power to Boost Damage. As for the third job, Skill Points of the Warlock, prioritize getting the following. Level 5 Element Enhancement which is a passive skill that would gain an orb when elemental skills are used. This orb would then increase the damage of the corresponding element. Level 10 Recognize Spell to summon elemental orbs and to increase MPEN. Level 10 Tetra Vortex which is our main skill for this video. At skill level 10, this will deal high magic damage at 1380% magic attack. This will deal 4 elemental damage using the elemental orbs. In addition, it has a 100% chance to inflict the burn, stun, freeze, or bleed effect to the target. Note however that the 10 second cooldown of this skill cannot be reduced. Then get level 5 status vulnerability to deal more damage to those inflicted with the burning, freezing, stunned, or bleeding states. If you have remaining skill points, you may allocate them on getting White Barrier. This skill would allow us to be immune to damage except Ghost Element. This is a good defensive skill in case we are not able to one-hit our targets. Now let's go to runes. First up, get the 10 Tetra Vortex Merge runes to increase our Tetra Vortex damage by a total of 40%. Next, get the elemental damage runes to further enhance our damage. Namely, we have 5 wind damage runes for a total of 7% wind damage, 6 earth damage runes for a total of 6% earth damage, 8 fire damage runes for a total of 10% fire damage, and 11 water damage runes for a total of 13% water damage. Note that some of these elemental runes cost 20 medals each, while those at the inner web of the rune cost much less. Thus, if you're budgeting your gold medals, prioritize those at the inner web first and just branch out when you have remaining gold medals. This way, we can lower the gold medal cost and a lot to rest for other runes. Next, get free int runes for additional damage. Lastly, note that for the Endless Tower and Oracle, it is still recommended to have the Meteor Storm and Fire Pillar runes unlocked. You may use it on auto at the lower levels of the tower and just use Tetra Vortex at the higher levels. In addition, while your Tetra Vortex is on cooldown, you may also use MS. As for the remaining contribution points, just allocate them on nearby magic attack nodes. Up next, let's dive into the recommended equipment set and cards. In general, some of the equipment and cards will be the same as those I've mentioned in my recent Chain Lightning video. Similarly, with this build, we want to swap out a few of our cast time items for those that increase magic attack, ignore MDEF and elemental damage for maximum damage output. For our weapon, the best in slot is still the Wizard's Power which is a synthesis of the Wizardry Staff. For the weapon card, you may invest in an Abysmal Knight card for additional 10% damage to boss monsters. Thus, if you have two equipped, that's additional 20% damage. Furthermore, depositing a third one will give plus 5% damage, giving us a total of 25% damage to boss monsters if you have all three. Just note that removing this purple card costs 100,000 zenny. For the offhand, instead of the Orlean server, we need the Sacrifice Book for Ignore MDEF. It is ideal to aim for a tier 8 plus 10 Sacrifice Book for bonus magic attack. For the garment, any with the Arcane Enchant will be ideal. The Robe of Cast for the armor, Crystal Palms for the shoes, and Eye of the Lahan for the accessories is recommended for their set effect with the Wizard's Power. For the armor card, having a Moonex Star card helps in achieving 100% Ignore MDEF. For the second accessory slot, you may have another Eye of the Lahan or Orleans Gloves. 
For the head, we have the Quaff or Norma the Unicorn from the Headwear Gotcha. For the face, we have the Monocle or Dancing Flame. For the mouth, instead of the Angry Snarl, we can offer those that increase damage or ignore MDEF, such as the Night Sakura Infatuation from the Headwear Gotcha. For the back, we have either the Bright Light, Lost Star Trek, or Devil Wing. And lastly, for the tail, any of these damage modifying equipment would be suitable. Next, here are some tips you need to take note of when using Tetra Vortex. Tip number one For your manual skill slots, repair Tetra Vortex and your self buffs, amplify magic power, energy coat, and recognize spell. Remember that you need to cast Recognize Spell first before Tetra Vortex since the orbs from Recognize Spell is a skill requirement for Tetra Vortex. Note that the enhanced element obtained from max level Amplify Magic Power would affect our damage towards targets with elemental weakness. For example, with Garm, we are dealing 4.3 million damage with the Water Element Enhanced. Whereas with the Wind Element Enhanced, we are dealing more damage at 4.6 million. This because Garm is of Water Element and our Enhanced Wind Element translated to more damage. Thus, keep this in mind when targeting specific boss monsters with elemental weakness. Next, if you are not able to one-hit mobs, here are some strategies. As mentioned earlier, you may cast White Barrier as a defensive skill. At its skill level breakthrough, the movement penalty is reduced to 50% and we are able to move around while being immune to damage except ghost damage. Another strategy is to cast Meteor Storm to finish the kill. However, as mentioned earlier, the Sacrifice Book is recommended for Ignore M Death. If you do not have Instacast Meteor Storm with Sacrifice Book, just prepare the Sacrifice Book and Orlean Server in your item slot. That way, we can easily interchange between the two. Another strategy while waiting for the Tetra Vortex cooldown is to use a Disguising Scroll. This will make us invisible to the aggressive monsters. Then, once the cooldown is off, just finish the kill with your Tetra Vortex. Lastly, for high HP monsters, having a Priest cast Lex Eterna will double the damage dealt. If you do not have a priest in your party, you may use the Cookie Transformation Scroll to cast Lex Eterna. As for my final tip, in order to increase damage, you need to invest in your raw magic attack. I have made a video dedicated to this and if you are interested, I have it linked down below. However, to temporarily increase your magic attack, you may consume the following. Original Will Juice for M-Pen and Magic Attack, Int Mill B, and Priest Blessing if available. Lastly, for your praying cards, prioritize M-Pen, ignore M-Death, and Magic Attack. Alright, so far we discussed the stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, and tips for the Tetra Vortex build. I hope this guide was helpful in maximizing our damage output with Tetra Vortex. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love you to consider subscribing by hitting your subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.